Oh. Hello, this is my video response to the Meaning of Life video. And, uh... That's what it is. I'm replying as the director asked his uh, viewers to, so... Yeah. I haven't watched all the videos yet. But I'm going through them, and I haven't found any that uh, have already stated what I'm going to state. But... I'm sure, I, I'm sure somebody else has, many people. I'm with the camp that there is no meaning of life. I am an absurdist, and there is no meaning of life. Richard Dawkins says it best, and you can watch a clip of a show right now that I have for you. It's a little bit quieter than me talking, so I'm sorry about that. We were no longer content to do what nature told us. We had begun to think about other goals that suited us. And we had a tool to express those goals. Language. Speech lets us share goals. And a creature able to communicate its goals begins to think purposefully, act purposefully, create purposefully. And even more amazing, through language, our goals can take on a life beyond any one individual. One inventor can produce the wheel. Using language, generations of inventors sharing the goal of fast travel can produce the modern car. Technology is human goal-seeking writ large. And once human beings set themselves to a goal, they force the pace of evolution themselves. This is an entirely new kind of evolution, non-genetic evolution, advancing at a speed that may be a million times faster than the genetic evolution which it resembles. We see its products everywhere, in the technology of the modern world. We have created a technological world that enables us to move far beyond the dictates of nature. And it allows us to do astonishing things. We alleviate hunger with new strains of crops, predict the weather with high-speed computers, and cure diseases with pharmaceuticals. Through technology, we have filled the world with purposeful creations. But technology does something else. It breeds an odd habit of thought. An animal who invents will look at the world in a different way from any other animal. We see the world through purpose-colored spectacles. So what he's saying is that we make a meaning of life. Each of us make a meaning of life, and we believe there is a meaning of life that we're searching for because we see purpose and meaning in everything inherently in the way we think as humans. Because we create things for a purpose, in the past we assumed that there was purposeful design in nature too. There wasn't. Now a lot of people say they don't believe in evolution, but the act like evolution is something you can believe in, you can choose or choose not to. But I don't think they, the people that say that don't understand what evolution is or what a theory is in science. Because what is a theory? It's a, it's a group of suppositions, ideas, that work together to explain some physical system and is tested and tested and tested and tested and works with corroborating evidence. Now... A lot of people would believe, would you, I mean, come on, would you not believe, would you choose not to believe in the theory of gravity? The theory of gravity explains gravity. Would you choose not to believe in the theory of evolution? I'm making that analogy. Some of you might say, like, Mac, you don't understand what I was talking about, or something like that. You can't just reply back with there is no meaning of life. What is the meaning of life to you? To you. Now, uh, of course, I say there is no meaning of life, but I'll answer that question that I can't really phrase into a question. I, I'm 
not put it into words because I'm thinking of it from a different person's point of view, maybe the director's or some other people's. And I will answer that on question question. So what is my meaning of life? Even though there is no universal meaning of life, as I show and believe, what is my meaning of life? Now, I've only told maybe three or four people about this before, but I guess I'm telling a lot more people now, huh? One day I thought of how to become immortal, and I figured out how to become immortal. Something that anybody can do. All you have to do is become one of the greatest persons who ever lived. These persons completely changed civilization forever. What are your criteria for a uh, greatest person to ever live? It could be leader, it could be a great scientist, it could be a great mathematician, a humanitarian. So my ultimate goal in life is to become immortal. But not for me, because that would be stupid. You don't necessarily have to be remembered as much as be deserved to be remembered. Because it's not about getting the credit, it's about doing it. It's about doing it. Go on the street and ask them how many people know who Kai Lun is. Linus Pauling, Johann Gutenberg, Louis Pasteur, Norman Borlaug. I guarantee you, a lot of people won't know. I do what should be done and don't expect credit. Credit can be nice, but I don't actively search for it or care for it. My meaning of life is to put what to be human is to the extreme. To be human, everything a human does is to exist. E happiness, it, my theory of happiness, it, happiness is there to keep you existing. Sex is to keep you existing, your genes at least, your species at least. And I am going to keep myself and my species. I'm going to help and do and try as much as possible to keep them existing. Anybody can come up with their own short list of immortals. For me, it's people like Einstein, Christ, Newton, Pasteur, Buddha, Gutenberg, Aristotle, Euler, Pauling, etc. There, the list is not innumerable, but it is big because... Human civilization has gone on for a long time. Leonard Euler was one of the most prolific persons who ever lived. He was a mathematician. And a lot of math that you see if, if you're learning it in high school, it was done by him. Newton is given credit to invent calculus. And also explain light. A whole category of physics is named after him. Newtonian physics, which would be the basis of classical mechanics. Norman Borlaug has been credited with saving over a billion people's lives when he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Kai Lun invented paper. Louis Pasteur invented pasteurization. Linus Pauling is responsible for a lot of the fundamental aspects of chemistry. These are known as some of the greatest people who ever lived. Would you want to have them not have lived? Maybe, I think, everybody should try and be one of those people. They should try and help humanity. They should try and search for knowledge, be, be a humanitarian, save people's lives, etc. The only thing every immortal has in common is what they did. Now one of my favorite quotes is by Einstein. Several people have said it, I do think. If I have some money and I give you my money, you have my money and I don't. If I have an idea and I give you my idea, we both have an idea. Ideas are the most valuable thing anybody can have. All these people thought of an idea and they shared it. Most of them thought of many ideas and that's what got them to immortality rather than just one idea. And that is my personal meaning of life. I will become immortal and that is and is. I don't want to necessarily be remembered as much as should be and deserve to be remembered because it's not about getting the credit or being remembered it's about doing it and that's what matters